Hi, my name is Professor Silver, and in today's class, we'll be tackling the complete history of Ash's hot-headed powerhouse Charizard. We'll leave no stone unturned as we deep dive into his legendary battles, heart-wrenching storylines, and iconic character growth. This video is brought to you by Skillshare. Prior to Charizard's debut as a Charmander in the episode Charmander the Stray Pokemon, he belonged to a wicked trainer named Damien who thought him the weakest Pokemon alive. No matter how badly Damien mistreated the poor fire type, Charmander loved him, followed him everywhere, and desperately sought his approval. While Charmander would have moved heaven and earth at the request of his trainer, his efforts were never enough as Damien only cared about strength, power, and showboating. Following one too many losses, Damien abandoned him on a rock in the woods and falsely promised he'd soon return. The Pokemon was unfortunately too naive to question Damien's intentions and stayed on the rock for many hours, possibly days, with no concern for his health or safety. By the time Ash stumbled onto him, Charmander had grown sickly and near death. His condition so mortified Ash that he twice tried to catch him in order to rush him to a Poké Center. Much to Ash's chagrin, however, Charmander stubbornly refused both attempts. It pained Ash to leave him behind, but he felt there was nothing more he could do for Charmander after Pikachu explained he already had an owner and wanted to wait for the owner's return. It wasn't until Ash overheard Damien brag about ditching him that he realized the fire type had no one who cared for him and no one who would rescue him from an impending storm. The revelation not only upset Ash, but also Brock. Since Damien refused Brock's request that he save Charmander and washed his hands of the Pokemon's plight, Ash, Brock, and Misty conducted the rescue in his stead. They rushed to Charmander's aid, saved him from a wild Spearow, shielded his tail, and ferried him to Nurse Joy, all because they truly cared for him and believed that if his flame ever extinguished, his life would perish. Joy worked all throughout the night to keep his tail ablaze, but he escaped the next day anyway as he couldn't fathom the notion that Damien had actually abandoned him. While en route to his rock, Charmander crossed paths with Team Rocket, discovered their theft of Pikachu, demanded they return the electric type to his owner, and roasted the trio with Flamethrower. Beyond amazing Ash, his display of power also impressed Damien, who watched from afar. Because of the showing, Damien asked that he rejoin his team. Charmander thought long and hard about the offer, but ultimately refused after Damien revealed that he never intended to come back, didn't reciprocate his love, and only wanted him for his newfound power. Although Damien retaliated to the rejection with hateful scorn, Charmander deflected his Pokeball, charred him with Flamethrower, and sent him running for his mommy. Having made clear once and for all that he would never again return to a life of abuse, Charmander happily joined Ash's team and became one of his most legendary companions. Like Bulbasaur, he prospered under Ash's tutelage and repaid his compassion with undying loyalty, loving affection, and ample utility support. Examples include illuminating a cave in Here Comes the Squirtle Squad, fighting off Team Rocket in the battle aboard the St. Anne, and helping Ash escape the St. Anne as it sank in Pokemon Shipwreck. Despite the bliss Charmander felt at Ash's side, the trauma he felt from Damien's abuse reared its ugly head on the island of the giant Pokemon when Bulbasaur suggested Ash had deserted him. Charmander was terrified to think Ash might have abandoned him, but he repressed the thought, swallowed his anxiety, and bounced back to his happy-go-lucky nature as soon as they reunited. The specter of Damien's influence and obsession with strength bubbled within his subconscious and provided him great hardship, but also fueled his growth into Ash's most valuable battler. He got spooked by Ghastly's illusions and the ghost of Mane's Peak, licked into submission by Haunter and the Tower of Terror, and terrified by Sabrina and Haunter vs. Kadabra, but finally rose to the occasion in Primeape Goes Bananas when he revealed himself the only Pokémon strong enough to beat Primeape. After upgrading his strength with Rage and toasting Primeape with Flamethrower, he gloated so heavily over his victory that one could be forgiven for mistaking him for Damien. In Pokemon Sensation, Charmander made comparably quick work of Celadon Gym Leader Erika's Weepin' Bell, but her gloom's pungent odor proved an insurmountable obstacle. To make up for the loss, he fought Fuchsia Gym Leader Koga in the Ninja Poker Showdown. Koga's Golbat opened with Wing Attack, but Charmander kept it at bay with Ember, outlasted Screech, roasted its wing, won with Fire Spin, and earned Ash the Soul Badge. Thereafter, he widened the power divide between himself and Ash's other Pokemon by fighting Lara Laramie's Growlithe in the Flame Pokemonathon and a Biker's Golem in the Bridge Bike game. Not only did Charmander Ember Golem dodge its rock throw, shoot off Flamethrower, and win out with Fire Spin, but he also hinted at the darkness that swirled within him by arrogantly laughing at his opponents. <laughs> Thanks to the experience he gained from his many battles, he easily mowed down a plethora of hypnotized Executor in the episode The March of the Executor Squad. Besides skyrocketing his level, beating the grass types also accelerated his evolution. The transformation in Charmeleon initially delighted Ash, but his elation quickly turned to sorrow when he discovered that Charmeleon no longer cared for him like Charmander once did. Although evolution made him significantly stronger, it also stripped him of his sweet demeanor and left little behind but the anger that had festered since his time with Damien. Because Charmeleon 
Alien adopted Damien's belief that strength alone was all that mattered and thought himself too strong to heed a novice's commands, he often ignored Ash and acted like a bully. Rather than help a Paris evolve like Ash intended in The Problem with Paris, for example, he made the bug flee in tears, turned his flame towards Ash, and forced Pikachu into the fray. Since Ash couldn't believe his beloved Charmander had turned into a self-centered jerk, he foolishly granted him a rematch with Paris that very same episode. Had Charmeleon not marched straight into Paris's pincer, caused its evolution, and been lulled to sleep by its spore, it's likely he would have shown no mercy and produced an extra crispy heaping of mushrooms. His unruly rage left Ash too scared to use him in anything but the most desperate of circumstances. Charmeleon didn't stay gone long, however, as only two episodes later in Attack of the Prehistoric Pokemon, Ash requested he rescue him from a horde of angry fossils. Unfortunately for Ash, Charmeleon cared so little for his well-being that he napped rather than protect the boy who once cherished him as a loyal friend. It was only after Aerodactyl bruised Charmeleon's forehead and damaged his ego that he braced himself for combat and leapt into the fray. Soon after Aerodactyl kidnapped Ash, Charmeleon hitched a ride to the surface, fumed at the rock type's taunts, channeled his anger, and made history by evolving into Charizard. Ash originally thought Charmeleon had evolved to save him, but his air and flamethrower showed he had instead evolved to get his revenge. In spite of his lack of regard for Ash's safety, Charizard saved him from Aerodactyl anyway when Jigglypuff prematurely ended the battle with Sing and sent Aerodactyl back into the earth. Although the kind gesture proved that he held Ash in high regard deep within his psyche, he didn't stop acting like a disobedient brat until well into the Orange Saga. Because of his nasty attitude and uncontrollable nature, he sat dormant in his Pokeball for 12 episodes until Ash needed his exceptional strength against Blaine in Riddle Me This. He snoozed against the Cinnabar Gym Leader's Rhydon and forced Pikachu to battle in his stead, but Blaine's Magmar so impressed him he helped it stop the volcano's eruption in Volcanic Panic. Once the crisis was averted, Charizard challenged Magmar to one-on-one -on -one combat in order to test his power. During the scuffle, he fired off Flamethrower, diverted Fire Blast, Tank Skull Bash, went claw to claw with Magmar, narrowly survived a Lava Bat thanks to his fire typing, launched an all-out aerial assault using submission, triumphed with an around-the-world seismic toss, and earned Ash the Volcano Bat. Since Charizard only battled to show his supremacy over Magmar, the battle did little to mend his friendship with Ash or improve his willingness to accept the trainer's commands. <laughs> By Charizard's next appearance in the episode It's Mr. Mimey Time, he had fully reverted to his old ways and become such a lazy jerk that he refused to protect a beleaguered circus. Even though the flame Pokemon was unwilling to provide utility support like he once did as a Charmander, he proved a helpful ally when Ash traveled to New Island in Mewtwo Strikes Back. While there, he arrogantly attacked Mewtwo and fought one of the legendary's many clones. Charizard and the clone exchanged many powerful blows and several flamethrowers, but he ultimately lost the fight due to the clone superior strength and knowledge of seismic toss. Despite his tears of affection at Ash's petrification at the end of the film, he totally lost Ash the Indigo League and friends and foe alike by refusing to fight Richie's Pikachu Sparky after beating his Charmander Zippo. Had Ash and Charizard learned to work together before the League began, there's no doubt they would have wrecked Richie, finished higher in the League's rankings, and fought in a full battle during the sixth round. After ruining Ash's post-league celebration and pallet party panic, Charizard hinted at the goodness within his heart by saving Pikachu from Team Rocket. During the first half of the Orange Island Saga, Charizard was a constant thorn in Ash's side. Even though he helped Ash earn the Sea Ruby Badge in naval maneuvers and formed a friendly rivalry with Tracy Scyther in a way off day off, he also burned Misty in Misty Meets Her Match and in Mandarin Island Mismatch, torched a Tauros and celebrated his victory with a rampage so destructive that Prima of the Elite Four had her Slowbro disable his power of Light, rather than let him wreak further havoc. In spite of Charizard's rebelliousness, Ash never lost faith that they would one day repair their friendship. He so believed in their potential for reconciliation that he asked Charizard to fight fellow Orange League competitor Tad's Polyrath in the episode Charizard Chills. Initially ignoring Ash's plea to battle, Charizard rested until Polyrath made the first strike. He tried to get his revenge with Flamethrower, but Polyrath shrugged off the flames, followed up with Water Gun, and won out with a freeze-inducing Ice Beam. Although Ash spared no time freeing Charizard from the icy prison, the intense cold left behind by the attack so worried him that he spent all night warming Charizard to ensure that his flame never extinguished. By not dwelling on Charizard's loss and only caring about his recovery, Ash proved to him once and for all that he would never abandon him and would love him no matter his strength. 
The next day, he made a full recovery, stopped dwelling on his past with Damien, pledged to Ash's undying loyalty, and finally accepted him as his trainer. Immediately after reconciling with Ash, Charizard teamed up with his old friend, vanquished Team Rocket, learned Dragon Rage, and impressed Tad just enough that he granted a rematch. As the battle raged on, Charizard proved that having Ash in his corner made him significantly stronger. Thanks to Ash's direction, he dodged Water Gun, fired off Ember, intercepted Mega Kick, evaded Ice Beam, jettisoned Polyrath, and won the rematch with Seismic Toss. Beating Polyrath cemented Charizard's partnership with Ash, and also returned him to his usable ranks. Though he still had quite the temper, Charizard confirmed he would never again return to his old ways in the episode Pokemon Double Trouble. Beyond following Ash's orders to destroy a Robo Rhydon without giving it so much as a second thought, he also teamed with Pikachu against Kumquat Gym Leader Luana's Marowak and Alakazam. Charizard took a major beating during the battle's first half as Luana's team seized on his inability to sync with Pikachu, but he turned things around upon learning that he and Pikachu were stronger together than apart. They saved each other from their opponent's attacks, disrupted Bone Ring, flew towards Alakazam, pulled up at the last second, and forced a double knockout through their clever trickery. Shortly after Charizard earned his fourth shell badge and helped him save the world in the power of one, he battled Orange League champion Drake's Electabuzz and entered the Dragon Age. Although Electabuzz dodged Flamethrower, landed Thunder Punch, and let loose Thunder, Charizard broke free of its electric hold with Ember, claimed victory with Seismic Toss, and then faced Dragonite. When Dragonite tore through his flames, the dragon-like fire type shook things up by taking to the air. He dodged several ice beams, did a dizzy spin, and nearly landed Seismic Toss, but Dragonite intercepted his throw, slammed him into the ground, and won out by producing the more powerful Dragon Rage. Despite losing the battle, Charizard's efforts contributed heavily to Pikachu's eventual victory. Winning the Orange League and gaining entry into the Orange Islands Hall of Fame delighted Ash, but failed to quell his desire to travel the world and become a Pokemon master. Following the arc's end, he traveled to Johto where Charizard muscled through most of his early battles. The fire type blasted off Team Rocket and Don't Touch That Dial, beat up Casey's Pokemon in the Devil Trouble header, stopped the Arbo Tank and Tanks a lot, embarrassingly tied with Ash's Chikorita and Chikorita Rescue, and fought Faulkner's Pidgeot in Fighting Flyer with Fire. Pidgeot got off to an early lead using its evasive maneuvers, Whirlwind, Wing Attack, and Quick Attack, but Charizard grew wise to its strategy, pushed through his pain, intercepted Quick Attack, incapacitated the Flying type with Seismic Toss, and earned Ash the Zephyr Badge. Because Ash's bout with Faulkner earned him major acclaim as a Charizard trainer. He and Charizard were invited to the Charizardic Valley by Liza, the Valley's caretaker, in the episode Charizard's Burning Ambitions. Within the Valley, there existed many wild Charizard who did nothing but eat, sleep, and train. Their fierce competition resulted in them being among the strongest Charizards in the entire world. When Liza suggested Ash meet her at the Valley, he revealed that he had no experience flying with Charizard. As a result, Charizard struggled to keep him afloat while flying there. He accidentally dove into a ravine, hilariously bounced off rocks, haphazardly flew through trees, and arrived completely exhausted. Charizard's inability to carry Ash led Liza to think him too weak to beat any of the Valley's Pokemon, but she let him battle some of the weaker Charizards anyway, as Ash begged her to let them prove their strength. Unlike Liza, Ash wholeheartedly believed in his friend and refused to think him anything less than perfect. Soon after Charizard was beaten into submission by one of the Valley's smallest residents, he tried his luck on a gentle giant who Liza considered one of the Valley's weakest Pokemon. To his shock, the giant shrugged off his sneak attack, slammed him into a wall, pushed him into the ground, and kneed him out of the Valley without breaking a sweat. He tried to claw his way back, but Liza blocked his passage, deemed him unworthy of entry, and left him with nothing but one last pity battle with her darling Charla. After Charla threw the bewildered powerhouse into a nearby lake, Liza told him to cool down, reflect on his limitations, and think on how he can improve himself. Since he wanted to get stronger and be the best Charizard he could be, he took Liza's words to heart and stayed in the water all through the night. He nearly fell asleep several times, but Team Rocket empathized with his plight, encouraged him from afar, and kept him awake by showering him with pebbles. The next morning, the trio followed up their compassion with more selflessness. They attacked the valley just so Charizard could protect it and impress those who lived within. Thanks to their noble sacrifice, Charizard earned the respect of his peers, proved his drive to be the greatest, and gained an invitation to train at the valley for as long as he wanted. Ash couldn't have been prouder for all that Charizard had accomplished, but he was filled with sadness upon realizing that Charizard's acceptance meant that they could no longer travel together. Doing what was best for his friend, Ash ordered Charizard to train hard, ran off before he changed his mind, and promised himself that they'd meet again someday. Charizard was initially taken aback by Ash's decision, but he knew their friendship would last a lifetime, respected his trainer's choice, and entered the valley with his head held high. 
Before we delve into more of Charizard's history and detail his many epic comebacks as Ash's ultimate fighter, I wanted to give a shout out to our sponsor Skillshare and tell you how the online learning community has helped me grow as a writer. Skillshare offers thousands of ad-free classes, all of which allow you to expand your creative horizons, explore your passions, and learn new skills at your own pace without the pressure of grades or tests. Simon Van Boy's Writer's Toolkit helped me overcome the hurdles that I had while writing Charizard, as his advice to create a writing space all your own helped me eliminate distractions and better better focus on my work. While I benefited from a writing course, Skillshare covers a wide array of creative topics, with every one of their videos containing subtitles in not only English, but also Spanish, French, Dutch, and Portuguese. A few of the other topics covered by the community's awesome instructors include illustration, photography, and graphic design. If you're looking to explore your creative self, I highly recommend you click the first link in the description, as the first 1,000 of my subscribers will get a one-month free trial of Skillshare. And now let's get back to the complete history of Ash's Charizard. Due to his intense training regimen at the Charisific Valley, Charizard returned to the series as an absolute beast in the spell of the unknown. Upon discovering that the legendary Pokemon Entei was threatening Ash, he flew to Ash's location, saved him from a deadly fall, ferried him on his back with ease, and gave Entei a major run for its money. Although Charizard lost the battle, the facts that he flew countless miles and literally risked his neck for Ash's safety confirmed that he would have Ash's back no matter the distance between them. Following his return to the valley at movie's end, Charizard resumed training and entered a romance with Charla. He also made frequent visits to the Dragon Holy Land, where he regularly sparred with the dragons owned by Dragon Master Claire. Because one of his visits coincided with Ash's trip to the Holy Land, he happily reunited with Ash and Fangs for nothing and fought at his side in Great Bowls of Fire after Team Rocket stole Claire's Dragon Fang and manipulated her Dragonite into being their lackey. Dragonite presented a major threat to everyone Charizard held dear, so he teamed up with Claire's Dragonair to quell the fully evolved dragon's rage before it destroyed the forest. During the brawl, he torched Dragonite, combined Flamethrower with Hyper Beam, missed Seismic Toss, took heavy damage from a Tail Thwack, and trapped Hyper Beam within Fire Spin. He and Dragonair ultimately calmed Dragonite and left the battle as allies, but they were reintroduced to each other as competing rivals in better rate than never when Ash challenged Claire to a Blackthorn gym battle. Charizard opened with Flamethrower, but Dragonair dove underwater to avoid the flames, retaliated with Dragon Rage, and followed up with Hyper Beam. Although he blocked the blast and evaporated the gym's pool to prevent further evasion, Dragonair safeguarded herself from his flames and landed a mighty blow with Iron Tail. When she tried the attack a second time, Charizard caught hold and took her for a spin with Seismic Toss. Dragonair stopped the signature finisher with Dragon Rage and sent Charizard plummeting, but he held strong, dodged Hyper Beam, caught another Iron Tail, and triumphed with a combination of Fire Spin and Seismic Toss. Charizard departed soon after Ash received his 8th badge, but returned for the Johto League in the ties that bind. As Ash's final hope against Gary and can't beat the heat, he incinerated Scizor, nearly broke his back fighting Golem before winning out with Dragon Rage, and served as the perfect foil to Gary's Blastoise. To kick off the battle, Blastoise withdrew itself from Flamethrower, landed Hydro Pump, let loose Skullbash, and put Charizard on edge with a barrage of Hydro Pumps. Since the arena's many pillars offered the Water-type protection from his flames, Charizard upped the intensity, melted the field, and left Gary's starter nowhere to hide. Blastoise cooled things down, but Charizard took advantage of the fog it produced to fly down unimpeded, engage in claw-to-claw -claw combat, and get so close that Blastoise couldn't land Hydro Pump. After failing to land Dragon Rage, Charizard stuck to his guns, unleashed Seismic Toss, slammed Blastoise into the surface, and one ashed the match. During the league's semi-finals in Playing With Fire and Johto Photo Finish, Charizard followed up his victory by giving his all against Harrison's Blaziken. After the two fire types opened the battle by trying to obliterate each other, Blaziken leapt away from Charizard's flames, dodged Dragon Rage, traded more flamethrowers, and exchanged a bevy of blows. The two struck each other many times, but neither connected strongly enough to end the match. Following Blaziken's quick attack and fire punch, Charizard struck back with flamethrower. The Hoenn starter responded with another quick attack, so Charizard shot off a tail slam, grabbed his foe, launched seismic toss, and slammed it into the ground. Though Blaziken took massive damage, it softened the landing with flamethrower thrower, countered back with quick attack, withstood flamethrower, dodged seismic toss, and did untold damage with blaze kick. As their final acts of the battle, the two fiery titans exchanged dragon rage and flamethrower. The shockwave generated from the attack's collision majorly damaged both Pokemon, but only Blaziken was left with enough energy to maintain its composure and remain standing. Right as Charizard was about to mount his comeback, he collapsed in defeat, making Harrison the victor. Despite Charizard's losing Ash a second league, his performance totally redeemed his lackluster showing in the Indigo Saga, and forever enshrined him as one of Ash's most powerful Pokémon. Thereafter, Charizard continued his training while Ash traveled through Hoenn. 
He was referenced several times throughout the saga, but never physically appeared. Examples include Max chiding Ash in There's No Place Like Hoenn for losing to Blaziken, and Ash saying in Like Meowth to a Flame that Charizard's use at the Hoenn League would be unfair to his present team. Though he missed out on the League, Charizard flew out to the Battle Factory in Numero Uno Articuno so that Ash could stand a chance in his battle against Frontier Brain Nolan's Articuno in the Symbol Life. Charizard proved himself the stronger of the two by overpowering Ice Beam, but Articuno evened up the score by dodging Flamethrower and using a misfueled sideswipe. After Articuno tanked Dragon Breath, it shot off Ice Beam, evaded Flamethrower, landed Steel Wing, sewed Havoc with Water Pulse, froze Charizard's wing, and landed Water Pulse-powered Ice Shards. Since Articuno's ice severely hindered Charizard's flying, he warmed himself with Overheat, an attack he learned at the Valley. Although Articuno blocked the special projectile and retaliated with Steel Wing, Charizard one-ashed the knowledge symbol anyway as he caught the bird's wings and landed a brutal seismic toss. Charizard delighted Ash by becoming the first of his Pokémon to beat a Legendary, but he left for the Valley at episode's end, likely because he felt compelled to continue his training. Later on in that same saga, Charizard returned for Ash's frontier battle with Brandon in Gathering the Gang of Four. Before the battle started, Charizard reunited with his old friends, settled a few arguments, revealed his knowledge of Steel Wing, and helped Ash rediscover his passion for battling. In the battle itself, Ash switched things up by using Charizard as his opening act rather than as his finisher. Brandon's Dusclops opened the match by blocking Flamethrower and Preempt empty Steel Wing, but Charizard remained strong and scored a direct hit with Dragon Breath. The Dragon-type attack did considerable damage, but it also helped Brandon realize that he'd lose the match if he relied on firepower alone. As a result, he ordered Dusclops to use Mean Look, tank Steel Wing, and activate Confuse Ray. Because the confusion wrought by Dusclops left Charizard totally impaired and Mean Look made him unable to return to his Pokeball, he was left vulnerable to the Ghost-type Shadow Punch and Will-O-Wisp. Soon after Ash revitalized Charizard's warrior heart and helped him regain control of his faculties, the starter sought his revenge with Dragon Breath, withstood Will-O-Wisp, and landed Steel Wing. Unfortunately, before Charizard could claim victory, Ash committed one of his most egregious sins in the entire series and commanded him to use Seismic Toss, not realizing that Fighting-type attacks were useless on Ghost. Thanks to Ash's ignorance, he missed the attack and fell to a gut-wrenching shadow punch. Despite the loss, Ash won the battle anyway and entered the Battle Frontier Hall of Fame thanks to Pikachu. Charizard didn't appear at all in Diamond and Pearl, but he returned in the black and white episode Fires of a Red Hot Reunion shortly after Ash lost the Unova League and visited a Kanto-themed festival. Seeing a Charmander at the festival made him nostalgic, so he recapped Charizard's origin story to his friends and invited him to rejoin his team. As is usual for Charizard, his joyous reunion with Ash was immediately met with an epic battle. Because Iris' Dragonite shared his goal of being the strongest, the two instantly caught each other's eyes, connected as rivals, and vented their aggression against each other on the battlefield. Proving himself forever the king, Charizard traded flamethrowers with Dragonite, jetted through the sky, blocked Thunder Punch, slashed through Dragon Rush, and sent Dragonite plummeting with Dragon Tail. Even though N ended the battle prematurely because he believed Charizard and Dragonite had gained each other's respect, I can't imagine Charizard losing if the battle had continued. The two clashed a second time in Team Plasma's Pokemon manipulation when Team Plasma mind controlled Dragonite, but they ultimately grew into the best of friends. Together, they went on scouting missions, blasted off Exploud, flew into rocks, rescued Mewtwo, and palled around with Claire's Dragonite when Claire returned to the series in Pokemon of a different color. Besides Iris' Dragonite, Charizard also formed tight friendship with Ash's Unova team. In Team Plasma and the Awakening Ceremony, Charizard helped them tunnel Ash to freedom and led them in their defense of Ash against the evil organization's many Pokemon. While Charizard befriended all of the Gen 5ers, he developed a special, brotherly bond with Pignite. It's not explicitly confirmed why they had such a special relationship, but I imagine it's because they share fiery hearts, traumatic pasts, a passion for battling, and a love for setting Ash ablaze. Besides fighting Dragonite and mentoring Pignite, Charizard spent much of his time in the saga fighting off opponents that threatened his friends. In defense of his beloved trainer, he torched James' Amoongus and Best Wishes Until We Meet Again, and clobbered a wild Ninetales in mystery on a deserted island. During the battle with Ninetales, Charizard tanked Energy Ball, missed Dragon Tail, dodged Flamethrower, slashed through Double Team, and triumphed with Dragon Tail. Ash and Charizard had a wonderful time traveling together, but their Decalore adventure ended in The Dream Continues when Ash returned to Oak's lab, left his team with Oak, and departed for Kalos. Prior to Ash's departure, Charizard blasted off Team Rocket and bid him a heartfelt farewell, signifying that they'd always be the best of friends no matter the distance between them. Charizard opted to stay at the lab rather than return to the valley, but his cameo and journeys confirmed that he keeps his skill as a battler sharp by training with Infernape and Ash's other reserves. Given Charizard's excitement at seeing Ash in their latest reunion, and his reputation as one of the most powerful battlers the anime has ever seen, I would be highly surprised if he didn't make a comeback for the Masters 8.
Charizard won against Damien, Ash's Primeape, Erica's Weeping Bell, Koga's Golbat, Chopper's Golem, Wild Executor, Cassandra's Paris, Blaine's Magmar, Richie's Charmander, Atoros, Tad's Poliwrath, Luana's Marowak, Luana's Alakazam, Drake's Electabuzz, James's Weezing, James's Victory Bell, Jesse's Arbok, Jesse's Lickitung, Casey's Pidgey, Casey's Rattata, Casey's Chikorita, Faulkner's Pidgeot, Claire's Dragonair, Gary's Scizor, Gary's Golem, Gary's Blastoise, Nolan's Articuno, James's Amoongus, A Wild Exploud, and Wild Nine. Tales. He lost to Erica's Gloom, Ash's Pikachu, Cassandra's Paris, Mewtwo's Charizard, Tad's Poliwrath, Drake's Dragonite, Charizific Charizard's Entei, Harrison's Blaziken, and Brandon's Dusclops. His one and only tie was with Ash's Chikorita. Over the course of the series, Charizard used Ember, Leer, Tackle, Flamethrower, Rage, Skull Bash, Fire Spin, Submission, Seismic Toss, Mega Punch, Dragon Rage, Take Down, Dragon Breath, Overheat, Steel Wing, Wing Attack, Slash, and Dragon Tail. Greninja may rival Charizard as Ash's MVP, but Charizard will forever be his original ace. He's a walking tank whose firepower is nothing short of amazing. By earning Charizard's trust, Ash forever established himself as a skilled trainer worthy of any competitor. What makes Charizard's narrative growth so impactful is that he forced Ash to become a better trainer and understand that Pokemon are living, breathing things whose trauma can hinder their development. Because Charizard played such a huge role in Ash's evolution, I sincerely hope the writers respect his legacy and give him a place on Ash's his team when he enters the final stages of the World Coronation series. And with that, class is adjourned. I'd like to extend a special thanks to both Skillshare and the channel's patrons as their support has made the continued growth of the channel all the more possible. If you'd like to watch classes early, have your name appear on screen when I soon cover Greninja, and get access to other exclusive perks, make sure to sign up via the link in the description. For additional extra credit, like, comment, subscribe, and hit the bell so you're never late. Until next time, catch you later.